have to remember that which Matthew text I'm talking about because the one I'm working on is for the 18th. Uh huh. So we shall we shall see. We shall see where Pastor Erlov goes this weekend. Did not. Yeah, I need to see that. I, I yeah. I. And this is another one of those reasons. Even if I'm not reading it, is finding ways to invite in, because folks need to hear another. Probably that's probably something else you ought to do. Is Extend an invite. We haven't had uh, somebody from the synod staff. We had Bishop Current with us last year in like February. Actually, in the fall might be a good time to find. Here's somebody. Um, might be a time to find um, see if uh, Dan. seven-day creation story. That'll be a fun one for who's my reader? I think it's Cindy Panther is the reader for this week. It is. I I know uh, our reader from Sunday was, oh, actually, um, I thought it was going to be me, but then uh, God bless her, Marlene Mertens um, jumped in and she had it all marked out. Did pretty good job with the Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites and all of the various and sundry, uh, sundry folks. That's the one that uh, readers used to avoid, like the plague. We, we don't want the Pentecost text. It's not that bad. Paul's worse than the Pentecost text. Because Paul, you have to kind of figure out. All right, which thought am I following here? Hey, Munsons. I was at the Memorial uh, Day service at Rogers Grove, and they always read the general order of the day um, that is kind of credited as being the first embodiment of it. And then on Flanders Fields. And uh, both the young adults who do that did a fine job. But I also was sitting there going, maybe I'll approach the post commander next year and say, hey, do you know who it is a couple of weeks in advance? I'd be more than happy to just work with them a little bit. So, so did I miss a birthday on the 27th? Yes. yes. And how old? Good on you. One finger in each hand, right? Cool. Did you have a good birthday? Yeah, because you got out of school not long after, right? No, you had gotten out of school the, the day before because it was Saturday, right? Cool. Well, I'm glad it was a good birthday. And you have an exciting transition that you were in, yes? Yeah, good on you. We heard about that at, at council as one of the exciting things for this summer. You've got like a family sabbatical. Yeah. Never had it before. Well, make yeah, make the most of it. We one of the things I shared was that often we are encouraged in transitioning between calls to actually take a, a fair chunk of time as as you can to do that because having time to decompress from the other and just recreate so you can go in fresh. And so, yeah. But you really can't get into that 
And uh, what I've heard from folks who've had sabbaticals is it really is the first two, two weeks before you really kind of fully relax. Okay. So you're relaxed because it's July 1? Okay. of things going on. I didn't know about that. Congratulations. All kinds of tumult in good and exciting ways, but still a bit of tumult. So some peace in the midst of that. Well, good. So good. Well, it is good to have you here and y'all here uh, for our Wednesday evening worship, uh, a time to take a break in the midst of uh, Gosh, it feels like summer already, uh, and certainly is dry, um, a little too dry. Some, some of those floating storms would be more, most welcome about this moment. Uh, but also, school just out, uh, newly mobile, uh, and uh, as we enter into this uh, summertime for real, starting tomorrow, to take a moment to just pause and breathe and reflect and sit uh, at the feet of Christ. And so, to begin, uh, we will breathe. And so I'll invite you to get your feet so get yourself settled into your chair. And then as we breathe, remember we breathe in through the nose. We breathe out through the mouth. And just kind of let all of anything that you're carrying just kind of Drift away and then refill yourself with that life-giving breath of the Holy Spirit. So we'll do that three times. And then we'll begin with responsive prayer. And so we breathe in. And out. We breathe in. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Show us your mercy, O God. Give us the joy of your saving help again. Give peace in all the world. Keep the nations under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy be forgotten. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we give you thanks for beautiful sunshine for the world come to life around us. 
thought we could use a little bit of rain, please. And we remember other places that are in need. People and places in Canada driven away by wildfires. People in Davenport wondering where their loved ones are in a collapsed apartment building. The people of Ukraine and Russia still at war. And all of those places sustain and give energy to those who bring help. Patience to those who are in need. Peace. Both within people and between them. We pray also for your healing touch to rest upon all those who we know who are in need of healing, both in mind, body, and spirit. Surround them with your care and remind us that we are a part of Now, O God, we ask that your spirit would stir in us the spirit you sent to your church, that it would inspire us through your word and through our pondering together about what it might mean for us and how we live. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, It's Holy Trinity Sunday coming up this weekend. We do Pentecost, and then we do the Trinity thing, and so the only reason I'm sure the Matthew text is in there is because it is pretty much the only time in Scripture that you actually get that Trinitarian formula of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit actually in the text. It really is an Easter text. So context for this. Verses 1 through 10 of chapter 28 is the resurrection story. And it ends with Jesus telling Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to go and tell the disciples to meet him as they had planned. And then um, one of the commentators I looked at says, 11 through 15 is really kind of an interlude. It's one of those stories within a story that kind of gives people time to get someplace. Uh, It's kind of like the, the Tamar story uh, in, within Joseph's story, it gets Joseph's time to be taken into captivity in Egypt. Um, so you have this little in, you know, interlude, and then you pick up in verse 16 about this meeting that Jesus, the risen Christ, had told the women to tell the disciples, hey, go to the place where we had said that we would meet in Galilee. And so this is Really, in Matthew, it's the first time that they've seen the risen Jesus. And so that's a little bit of context for this text. And it's Matthew 28, 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Now, pretty familiar text, but If you look at the language and the way it's normally translated and the way I've preached it, I freely admit, um, it may not say what we think it says. So they're meeting on a mountain, right? And if we know anything, Matthew is a gospel that is written to a Jewish Christian audience because Matthew has 14 times, I think it is, this is to fulfill the scripture that says X, Y, Z. And so, as Jewish Christians, they know the Hebrew Scriptures, and those of us who have been reading the Hebrew Scriptures, God often shows up on mountaintops. 
There have been some other mountains in this gospel. There's the mountain of the uh, transfiguration, right? They go up and Jesus has his tide moment, right? You know, where his clothes are bleached whiter than snow. Uh, and ah! But also, we've had another mountain moment. It started the gospel. It's the Sermon on the Mount. It's where Jesus lays out, here's what it means to be followers of Jesus. It's turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, right? Love your enemy, pray for those who persecute you, right? It's that teaching. So they meet again on a mountain. Well, there are other mountains. There's the mountain where Moses got the Ten Commandments, right? Um, there's, so mountains are always an important place. So they're meeting on a mountain. And they saw him. And the language here um, probably should read something more like this. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Now, it's, they translate it here, um, some doubted. But one of my uh, folks who I read frequently, who knows Greek better than I do, heck, he knows English better than I do, makes the argument that there, there is no distinction in the language. Isn't that interesting? They see him. They worship him. And they doubt it. They worship and doubt at the same time. I think that's interesting. Jesus says to them, all authority in heaven and on earth uh, has been given to you. Uh, and then often we hear go as an imperative. But I got reminded that the go is not, um, it's actually not an imperative. Disciple is the imperative. And so it really ought to be something more like, um, something to the effect of go disciple go and as you go disciple all people all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit therefore having gone disciple all nations while baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Isn't that kind of interesting? One, the assumption is you're already moving. I mentioned that last week. Christianity is, it, the assumption is moving. We're always, we're moving, we're going somewhere. And so having gone, disciple all the nations while you baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the disciple is the imperative, it's the command teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Well, what has he commanded? That's another thing that kind of goes back to Sermon on the Mount. Here are the things that Jesus has sat down and said, if you want to follow me, it's these things. It's love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Turn the other cheek. It's, it's the ethic that is put forth in the Sermon on the Mount. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So I, I got intrigued by this. Because that's not the way, I don't know about you, that's, I've, not, I've, I've preached it the way where, no, it's go. And, and it's all about, you know, you make disciples and you preach and you teach. And yeah, there is that. And actually I'm working on some of that for when I come back. So you hear more on that in a couple of weeks. But having gone disciple all the nations, One of the other folks I look at talks about there's so there's apostles. Apostles literally mean sent ones. So the disciples become apostles when Jesus sends them. Right? Literally it means sent ones. 
And so he talks about, well, all right, apostles are folks who have a message who've been sent. Disciples are ones who kind of sit and learn. How, how do we be both disciples and apostles at the same time? It's a bit like how do we worship and doubt at the same time. This is good Lutheran stuff, right? We as Lutherans ought to be able to handle this because we talk about two things being true at the same time, right? We're both saint and sinner. It's about law and gospel. Uh, we understand that, that both those things can be true at the same time. And so that just, that really, that's, in, that's intriguing. I mean, have you heard anything like that before? This idea of, of um, you know, they worship him and they doubt him. Have you heard that one before on this particular text? It's intriguing, isn't it? Do you think it's possible? Can you worship and doubt at the same time? Doing that right now? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard people bear witness to that, that, you know, at this moment, because of whatever is going on in their life, um, it, it, at that moment, <laughs> they really are wondering. Uh, but they show up anyway, and, it's, and I've had a person express it to me that, well, I need them to believe for me. I know Pam, and if I need Pam to believe for me right now. I'll get back there. But for now, I'll lean on her belief. Mm -hmm. And also, there are those moments where you just you're sitting there, and and I don't know about you, but every now and again, you get a flash of going, really, really, really. Or you look around and you go, yeah, really. But, I, yeah, I, I appreciate that, that reading of the text. I don't think it's a misreading based on what I'm understanding of the language. In fact, I think some, I think taking it the other way is, is probably been done to kind of protect. But is that also not one of the issues is, so I finished up, uh, it was basically a tutorial um, for my class for UD, and I talked about, I, he, uh, I always have them read one of two books. And normally I've got enough for two groups. Well, I can't bifurcate one person. So he got to choose, and he chose the one, Messy Spirituality, by Mike Iaconelli. And everybody who reads that is always trans, just transformed, literally, by this understanding that you don't have to be perfect to be a follower of Jesus. In fact... Messy is, is kind of the norm. And so I think that go also goes with, with doubt, that this sense of I gotta be 100% rock solid or I can't come through the doors. And so to have the, the disciples, and you can also understand it, all they've heard is the reports brought to them by the Marys. Right? Well, but, here they are. I mean, it's kind of a Mark moment. Mark, Mark doesn't even get this far. Mark just has the women being told to go tell the disciples to, that Jesus will meet them in Galilee. Apparently there has been a rendezvous place set up. And th that Jesus will meet them there. And we don't even get that far. It just ends. And they don't say anything to anyone because they're afraid. You know, black screen and suddenly... Uh, what is it, Journey starts playing? What was the end of uh, 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 Sopranos? You know, it's just, it's that abrupt. Well, here, Matthew goes a little farther, and actually, they, we see that, and so they've at least, they've gotten the word, and, and believe it or not, they showed up. So there's something going there. It's kind of like doubting Thomas. When he shows up the following week, 
after getting this incredible report and saying, I will only believe it if I stick my finger in his, in the, right? But next Sunday, where is he? He's in the room with him. Ah, I don't believe it. I don't know. Yeah. But there he is. And so they do the same. And then one comment of the, when you look at this, so they go to the mountain where Jesus directed them. And they saw him, and they worshiped, and they doubted. And then Jesus came and said to them, and so with that Jesus came, there, uh, one uh, interpreter says it's almost like they're on the mountain, and then they catch a glimpse of Jesus coming up the trail. And so they see him, uh, and they worship him, and they doubt. Oh, you know, thanks be to God, but ah, uh, huh? And then he comes up and he starts talking. And then he says, you're my peeps, right? You're my peeps. You worshiping, doubting, but here you are up on the mountaintop people. So go. We're actually, having gone, disciple the nations. Teach them what you know. And baptize them. And I'm with you always to the end of the age. It's often called the Great Commission, right? I had one of one of my guys was talking about this. And he says, I think we missed that this text is about Jesus. The words, all authority in heaven and on earth was given to me, and behold, I am with you all the days even to the completion of the age, even to the end of the age. Bracket the words to the disciples. And it raises what I hope is a meaningful question. Is the primary point here that we are commissioned, and therefore Jesus' words about himself are encouraging for us? Or is the primary point here that Jesus, even now, has all authority on heaven and on earth, and even now is with us to the end of the age, so that to disciple others by perpetuating his teachings is how we respond to his authority and presence. He's with us. He has authority on heaven and earth even now. He is with us even now in this moment on a Wednesday afternoon in the latest in May you can get. When being outside sounds really good, Jesus is here now with us. And... We respond to that presence and to that power by discipling others. And even though we may doubt our ability to do that, we trust in that promise that all authority on heaven and earth is Jesus. So we do that anyway. Even though we go, well, what can I do? I'm just 11. 442. But whatever it would be. And then we read Acts. And we see the amazing things God can do with just regular old ordinary people. Who trust in that power. So yeah, the, one of the other texts for this weekend is the seven day creation story. Which I can have all kinds of fun with. Um, but it's long, number one. And number two... Um, I got intrigued by, I, I, reading those commentators had me seeing this text in a totally different light. And that was kind of intriguing to me. Other things that you see, you hear in this text? Yeah, I mean, it's about it for Matthew. So everything else we're going to be doing will be going back to the beginning. I just to ponder on those things worshiping and doubting and, and that while we're on the road we disciple while we're moving we're doing that yeah uh huh 
Oh yeah. Yeah, um, Mark Davis, uh, who is the translator I often, is kind of my go-to translator for something different. Um, um, he, he, trans he tends to translate that life aged long, because literally that's what it is. Um, and, and we enter into that, we get into the you know, theology of it, we enter into that when we die, and are resurrected in baptism. You already are in eternal life at that moment. The state of it just changes when, when our earthly body dies. Which means, yeah, Jesus is with you now. It's not a future thing. Jesus is not, not here. Did I do that right? Double negatives? Right? Jesus is here now with you as you go. It's Jesus on the road to Emmaus, right? Whoa, Jesus showed up on the road. It's Jesus, now we're back into Matthew. It's Jesus in the hungry one. It's Jesus in the thirsty one. It's Jesus in the alien at the border. It's Jesus in the one who is sick. It's Jesus as the one who is in prison. It's Jesus. Go, go back and take a look at the, um, if any of you are reading along with the read through the Bible in a year, and it's not too late to start. You don't have to catch up. So if you have some extra time this summer, but if you have some extra time this summer, give it a, give it a go. The resources are still out there. I'm planning on having, at some point, uh, seeing if that group wants to get together and just have a conversation. But take a look at what is, what is consistently drummed into the heads of why bad things happen to the people of Israel. It's when they ignore the widows, the orphans, the aliens in their land, when they worship other gods and not God. That's what gets them into trouble. It seems to me Jesus pays attention to those things too. And Matthew says Jesus is present in those who we help who do that, who are that, who are suffering from that. Yeah. And so I was very thankful uh, when we went to the Synod uh, Revival. One of the things they had us do, this is one of those things that uh, I'm, I'm looking at Jake because he helps with uh, our Wednesdays. Uh, we made car kits for folks to have in the car and had items that um, folks who are in need um, often uh, are welcome to them. Socks, hand sanitizer, like a granola bar, uh, band-aids, uh, some bottled water, uh, and some other items like that. So we made car kits to put it in our car with notes in them and on them so that if we see somebody, it is at least something that we can offer to them. Why? Because that's Jesus sitting by the side of the road. Isn't that an interesting thought? Enough pondering. It's time to feed ourselves. We've fed our brains. It's time to feed our bodies. And so I will invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. For in your Son, Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. So I'll invite you all to come to uh, the front of the steps here. David, you can come on down too, and I'll bring you the meal. you to stand. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we've done wrong. Graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Ready? Let us bless the Lord. Let us be I heard it. Uh, <laughs> Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Um, yeah, I know. We had wafers all the time growing up. We, we had great fun talking about putting them into phaser guns and uh, efficient distribution, etc., um, so, things that are happening. Tomorrow, uh, VBS uh, registration opens. Uh, it's the same week as RAG Bri, but we're going to have some interesting tie-ins with that. Uh, Bishop Current uh, and the two other Iowa bishops are planning on riding in RAG Bri at least 50 miles a day. So, she actually has a training ride this Saturday that will come by here. Uh, and so we've got information on uh, our Facebook page about that if you are a cyclist or even if you just want to come cheer her on. Um, and uh, they're hoping to raise $50,000 for uh, world hunger relief. Uh, and that is one of the things that we'll be tying into our VBS. And she, sh she should be here with us because they end in Coralville that day. She should be here with us on that Friday. So keep all of that stuff in mind. It is coming up. If you happen to be available either to participate or to help with that, we would love to have you. Um, those things are there. I will not be here for the next few weeks. So um, for Wednesdays, uh, Deacon Pam, Larry Bizirath, will be leading worship for us over the next couple of weeks. Uh, this, uh, when, this Sunday, uh, Pastor Mark Erlov will be present, and then the following Sunday, Pastor Randy Kosh will be present. I'm gone this weekend with Karen for her brother-in-law and sister's 50th wedding anniversary. That's Miss Hansen. Uh, and then actually uh, the following Tuesday after opening things up for this, um, the conversation uh, about the community center here in Ely. So if you're an Elyite, please do come to that presentation uh, on the 6th in the evening. Uh, we'll head north and then we're on vacation to Hawaii. It's kind of our, it's our 10th anniversary celebration. Uh, and so we'll be back in town that following Friday. 
Uh, so I'll be back for the 18th and then pick up the Wednesdays following that. Um, so please treat all of these folks well. I think that's kind of the main info stuff. Don't forget your flat Jesus. If you haven't made one, we've got them. If you have made one, take one with you. I know that ours will be going to Hawaii. There's one, I believe, in France right now, uh, uh, taking a river cruise. Uh, and we've gotten some others that have been posted on our website, so feel free to check the webpage for that. Um, yeah. Other than that, I say unto you, yay for being done with school, college, community. You'll be soon. And I say unto us all, go in peace, serve the Lord. Get up on it.